High School in historic Wellsburg, West Virginia. WTRF proudly presents Ohio Valley Tonight with Nathan Marshall. Tonight's guest, Kayla Spiker. Welcome to another edition of Ohio Valley Tonight with Nathan Marshall. And tonight we are joined by the co-owner of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania's Studio 412 and the owner, you better be the owner, of <laughs> Kayla Spiker Photography, professional fashion photographer Kayla Spiker herself. Thank you for coming in, Kayla. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Kayla, one of the things I have to ask about is every time I see a picture of a model or something, of especially high fashion photography in these magazines or whatever, they're always doing these weird... <laughs> eccentric poses which people don't do in real life you never see somebody walking in the hall <laughs> like this that doesn't happen I mean, why do they do those <laughs> extreme ridiculous poses like that is there uh, does that help them sell the product or, or what is it yeah kind of in a way i guess it's more or less they kind of form a shape okay and it's more of a compositional thing um, and also if they're in a certain position um, it kind of leads your eye to a certain part of the clothing. Kind of like uh, subliminal messaging almost. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, <laughs> don't look here, but do look here. Yes. One of those kind of things. Hmm. Um, and it also gets more complicated when there's two models and they're together, so it kind of creates this bigger shape. It's just mainly an eye-catching thing. It's yeah. something you don't see every day, so it kind of draws your attention towards it. Yeah, that weird, the weirdness. So if, yeah. if you have two models, you can make them into the golden arches. Oh, yeah. For <laughs> McDonald's. Get really creative. Perfect, yeah. <laughs> Well, how much work actually goes into making a model look gorgeous? Because this is something people struggle with all the time. They see someone in the magazine, they're like, oh, they're gorgeous, I'll never be like them. And especially with high school students, I deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, guys and girls alike, they think if they are, don't look like somebody on a magazine cover at mm -hmm. all times in every single picture, selfie or whatever, you know, <laughs> pictures, they think that they're ugly, yeah. they're completely hideous. You know, uh, how much work actually goes into making those people attractive, mm -hmm. I guess? Yeah, that's kind of one of the more unfortunate aspects of fashion photography because everything really does have to look so pristine. Is that's been the industry standards for years. Even back in the film days, they would retouch their photos. Mm -hmm. um, everyone's supposed to have great self-esteem, and whenever they open a magazine, it's like, <laughs> I can't look like that. And it's yeah. true. I mean, no one really looks like that. Mm -hmm. um, I do all my own retouching for my work. Yeah. And I got to tell you, I'll spend up to 10 hours on one image, and that's completely normal. So next time you think you're ugly, remember, <laughs> 10 more hours of photoshopping, exactly. and you could be beautiful too. That's, that's an easy self-help book right there. Even though the models are beautiful in person, there's just things that you have to fix to make it fit that fashion photography standard. Yeah. So the idea is to make it look flawless. Like yeah. Nobody even touched the image, so yeah, <laughs> it, it really is fooling the eye. And seeing your pictures, and we're, we're showing some of them throughout the interview here, I mean, mm -hmm. they're wonderful pictures, and you do, you make them look flawless. But even, mm -hmm. like, looking at some of the, the girls that you work with, or the guys you work with, you know, people think that these models are, like, these Adonises or goddesses. The ones that really make it big are the ones that are not, I wouldn't say that they're beautiful. I'd say they're more, like, awkward-looking. That yeah. might be the wrong terminology for it, but they're, they're not normally beautiful. They're strangely beautiful. Why is it that these models are the ones that are picked for these high-fashion things and not, like, the typical gorgeous person you right. see in your, your school or something? Yeah, it's kind of like they have really unique characteristics yeah. that you don't see typically every day. That's a way um, better way to put it. They're, yeah. yeah, kind of exaggerated. Like a lot of them have really strong jaw lines and high cheekbones, and they just really pop off of an image whenever you see it. And the way the lighting hits them is a little bit different um, than it would hit a normal person with different features. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a good, yeah. The more gangly you are, <laughs> the more likely you'll be a model. Right. Yeah. <laughs> But well, with the invention of things like Instagram and these apps on your phone where you can just take a picture, uh, put a filter on, and it looks kind of wonderful, you know, a lot of people think that they are these great photographers. Yeah. What do you think about those things? Um, it's kind of a double-edged sword. It's mm -hmm. really great, and it's kind of not so great in a way. Um, I know a lot of photographers do use Instagram and Facebook, and they've gotten a lot of followers and a lot of publicity from it, and I've gotten into it myself. so. Um, I'm starting to reap the benefits a little bit, yeah. but at the same time, it's it, it kind of hurts the photography industry because there's a lot of people out there that use Instagram and they kind of think they're a photographer, <laughs> <laughs> and you have a lot of people that go out and buy a decent camera at Walmart and think they're a photographer, mm. and this person might shoot somebody's wedding for $50 or $100. Yeah, usually. I, I, my, my favorite part about that is when someone gets a photographer for $100 for their wedding, and then they go, I don't know why the pictures didn't turn out. <laughs> yeah. 
You paid 100 bucks for your photography. I mean, usually in a life-changing event, you, unless it's like a divorce, you should probably <laughs> get a professional photographer, professional mm -hmm. videographer. I mean, that just yeah. makes sense. Or, you know, advertise that they're a professional for photographer on Craigslist and... That's creepy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guy stalking your house for three weeks. You said you can need $15 to take your baby's photograph. I'm here to take it. Yeah. yeah. Not the best thing ever. No. <laughs> People don't realize when your art becomes your job, things change a little bit. When you, you're making money on it, it changes a lot, uh, especially in a business where you have to be self-motivated like yours. Mm -hmm. My question for you is, what continuously drives your passion for the art of photography? Is it money or is it something <laughs> exterior? Well, I wish it was money. <laughs> <laughs> That's what every <laughs> artist says, yeah. yeah. Still the starving artist. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but um, what drives my passion is just completing one project and going on to the next. I really get into um, creating a concept for a fashion shoot, like going through the makeup and the styling and the wardrobe, location, and telling the story that I want to tell. So I just really get inspired by something and I just go for it. And I love being able to finish a project and then go on to the next one. Yeah, so basically with photography, you feel like you're a hurdler that's doing mm -hmm. a puzzle as you're <laughs> going <laughs> yes. over the hurdles. Always, uh -huh. always a fun thing. And one thing that I've found is really, um, I don't know, just keeps me going is getting feedback from other people. So yeah. I really am driven off of what I hear from people's comments on Facebook or based off of my website. Just any comments, good or bad, it just really drives me to do the next thing. Yeah, and I think for any artist, that's the biggest thing you want is you want someone to just look at your art and, and have a, an opinion on it. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes it hurts, but at least you have someone that cares enough about right. it to talk about it, which is a great thing. Mm -hmm. Well, you actually went to several great schools. You uh, went to the prestigious Tyler School of Art at Temple University, which I've actually stopped at before, and it's, it's really a wonderful school. You've been to the Alfred School of Art and Design at Alfred University in Alfred, New York, which you actually graduated cum laude. I was cum laude, yeah. too. High five Yay. for that. <laughs> yeah. One of our students, at, oh, a junior at Brook High School, Sarah Young, has a question about uh -huh. the education needed for to be a professional photographer. She says okay. this right here. Many people think you can just be a photographer. Why is it important to get an education to be a professional photographer? I think it's really important because it really makes you a well-rounded artist. Um, whenever I went to school, I had to do a lot with drawing and painting, and that's really helped my photography because I've learned a lot about lighting, and yeah. I also know a lot about anatomy, mm -hmm. which is really helpful when you're photographing in person. That's a very good point. <laughs> also, within my degree, they really push you to do new work, mm -hmm. um, and I would have to create a piece, like, start and finish within a week oh, wow. and so it was pretty intense so I really learned how to be disciplined with my artwork and, and be really driven so yeah. that's been really great for me. I even had a kid the other day I mean talk about any art people think it's just easy you yeah. just, anybody could do it and I had a kid tell his math teacher he wanted to be an actor and he said uh, I don't need math I'm gonna be an actor and I, and I laughed at it. I said I don't know who, where they're learning that from but tell us why you have to know all these things even Sadly, math. Um, because it just gives you more stuff in your toolbox that you can draw out of. You can be inspired by it. And even as an artist, sometimes I need to use math. <laughs> so. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. So. Sadly, we all have to. <laughs> yeah. Don't like to, but we have to. Mm. And that's part of it. Well, again, we've been joined tonight by Kayla Spiker, who's from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and she's a fashion photographer. Thank you for coming in, Kayla. For Appreciate me. it. And you can learn more about Kayla or her photography by visiting my website. It's on www.kaylaspiker.com. Okay. And can you spell it for me because that's yeah. going to be a tough one? Absolutely. It's K A E L A S P E I C H E R. And you passed your spelling bee. Congratulations. <laughs> and for Ohio Valley tonight, this has been Nathan Marshall. Pocahontas would be great with her huge high cheekbones. Just around the river bend. <laughs>